Hi guys, um, first off, excuse the way I look, um, I was on vacation for the past few days and, um, I've been really tired because I didn't get much sleep, um, so, uh, yeah, I'm really tired, so, um, this video is basically, um, gonna be about why I, why Marilyn Monroe is such a, um, Im had such an impact on my life, I guess is the opportune word or whatever. Um, for those of you who don't know, June 1st, which was this past Saturday, uh, June 1st, 2013, Marilyn Monroe would have been 87 years old. And I wasn't, I was gonna make this on her birthday, but I didn't have any internet where I was down at the beach at the condo, so, um, I just waited until I got home. So, she would have been 87 years old. Um, Marilyn Monroe, born Norma Jean Baker, Norma Jean Mortensen. She didn't... The reason I think that she is such an amazing woman, and so many people just think of her, and they automatically think uh, sex icon, or beautiful, or drug addict, or early death, famous because she died early. You know, a lot of actresses have died really early because of accidental overdose, murder, what have you. And they're not nearly as remembered as Marilyn Monroe. She is still almost a hundred, like about almost a hundred years after her birth, 50 years after her death, she is still Hollywood's most beautiful actress and the most well-known out of all of the, you know, original, um, I want to say like classic Hollywood actors of the old Hollywood time, like, you know, uh, Betty Davis, Joan Crawford, um, people like that, um, Joanne Woodward, all, all, the, all those people, and even, like, Debbie Reynolds and stuff, you know, I just, from the time she was born, she had to fight, she fought for her life, she, you know, she went to work on an assembly line for the military when she was really young, and, um, she didn't know who her father was. She still didn't know who her she didn't know who her father was up until the time she was born or died. Sorry. Um, I just this is I this is I don't even know how to describe it because it's just it's so close to me and a lot of people don't understand that. You know she had so many mental health problems that back in the fifties nobody knew about. They all they knew was that Marilyn was high strung and she was crazy. That's all they knew. They didn't take the time to get to know her because back then, psychology wasn't wasn't all the best. If you experienced even the slightest abnormality in behavior or what you did or what you said or if you didn't act the norm, you were sent away. And you I don't mean like nice places. Well, I say nice. They're better than they were then. These were bad places where they shock treatment and they basically lobotomized you and basically just numbed you and... Made you so you were a vegetable so that, that you wouldn't be an issue to them and you wouldn't be a problem to them. Um, but she, and so there was no medication. There was no prescription medication. There was, but it wasn't for her. Like, I don't know if anyone else understands this. Um, so what she would basically do was, what her managers and stuff would do was, if she got out of control and over anxious and freaked out. They would drug her to calm her down. She would take drugs to go to sleep. She would have to take drugs to wake her up because she took drugs to go to sleep. And she felt groggy in the morning. She was late to set almost every single movie she did. And I don't mean like 10 minutes late. I mean like hours late. She kept them waiting. And she was fired from, um, I want to say her, one of her last movies. Yeah, she was fired from one of her last movies and that was what they say that's what really pushed her over the edge, but I just, if you guys have seen the movie My Week with Marilyn, you, you should, if you haven't. It's very well done. It was the first thing I saw Eddie Redmayne in, and then come to watch him in Les Mis, I was like, oh, that's weird. Um, Emma Watson is in it for just a little bit. It was kind of one of her little roles after she did Harry Potter, um, but it, Mar My Week with Marilyn is Michelle Williams, who you may have seen in uh, Prozac Nation, Oz the Great and Powerful. She was Glinda. She was also in Shutter Island. She played um, the wife, the crazy wife, which she was really freaky in that movie. 
Um, she was Heath Ledger's uh, girlfriend. I don't know if they were married, but she has this kid. So I don't know. Um, she did very well, and she actually looks... She looked just like her. The way that they cut her hair. And she actually did her own singing, too. And I love Marilyn. I, I love her songs. I have, like, 50 of them on my iPod. But Michelle sounds a lot better. I think it was just because of the time... Time in the 50s, the singing voices sounded a lot different. And the songs, you know, just... You know what I mean? They just... They weren't the same. Um, but Michelle did all her own singing, and it was very good. And... Basically, the process of the movie was Marilyn um, goes to England to make a Prince and the Showgirl. The Prince and the Showgirl, which is a very good movie. That's a, it is a very good movie, and she's very good in it. It's a comedy. It's a romantic comedy, kind of. And basically what happens is she's married. And she's married to her uh, third husband at the time. And what happens is she ends up finding a notebook, which this is true in real life. This happened in real life. He was a writer, and she found this notebook that he wrote in. It was like a little spiral-bound notebook. And he would write in it, and he wrote things in it like he wished he never had married her. She's crazy. She's suffocating him. and All this stuff. And it shows her in... And this is all based on the book that the guy that she attaches to later on wrote. He went on to be a... Um, uh, not an author, but just a writer, I guess, and like a screenwriter and playwright and stuff like that. Um... But he was in the house, and he went. He heard her crying, and he went upstairs, and she was just leaning against the wall in the fetal position, holding the notebook with a blanket around her, just crying. And, you know, it's so sad that, you know, a lot of people say that she was borderline personality, which I think, she, I totally agree that she is, or she was. I totally agree with her. Her mother was schizophrenic. Like, schizophrenic and psychosis. Her mother was... I don't like to use this word, but her mother was insane. Her mother was... Her mother was to the point where she was, like, violent. And she was dangerous. His, like, just... Awe. Like, they said that when they went to tell her that Marilyn died, she didn't even know who she was and she didn't care. It showed her in this wheelchair just... She looked angry and she, she just didn't care. And... And it... Anyways, what ends up happening is her husband leaves her to go back to America to visit his kids. And because of the BPD, she, we, BPDs like myself, we have this, um, uh, unrelenting fear of abandonment, I guess is what you could say. We are constantly afraid that the people that we love, even the people that we don't love, the people that we know are going to leave us for no reason and we're so scared of that and they don't even have to give us a reason we could just we look into things too deeply we read too much into people we take things too personally and it all builds up into just an emotional meltdown and what ended up happening is she in order to cope with that she did what she had to do which was she latched onto the first person that she could that was nice that was sweet to her and that ended up being in the movie Colin, played by Eddie Redmayne, who was like the third director's assistant. He was basically like a no one. Actually, he says in the movie, he's a gopher, go for this, go for that. And she actually says, like, they didn't even know each other maybe three days. And she's like, I love you. We need to spend, we could spend forever together and, you know, all this stuff. And she's wanting him to stay the night. And I'll just, all she's wanting to do everything with him. She was skipping sets. Um, filming days to be with him, and and it got to the point where um, he got a call in the middle of the night from his hotel from um, Mar Marilyn's uh, acting coach and um, Lee. Lee, uh, Lee Str no, it wasn't Lee. Lee's the one in America. Anyways, um, got a call, and they were like, Colin, Marilyn wants you, and you can hear her in the background just screaming. And when he goes over there, She's hysterically crying, and she sees him, and she's upset because people were wanting her to work, and she was sick. She wasn't feeling good. And so what she ended up doing was when Colin walked in, um, they all left. They left her to, to talk to Colin. And they sat down on the bed, and she was just hysterically sobbing, and she just grabbed onto him and held him, and he was holding her, and she just said, and when I saw this in the theater, I started crying because I have done this so many times. She just started crying and said, 
please don't leave me. Please don't leave me. Everybody I know leaves me. Why does everyone leave me? Please, please don't leave me. And you could just tell in her voice that she meant it. And it was like he was the last person in the world to her. And, and you know, of course, you know, to make her feel better, he's like, I will never leave you. I will never leave you. And she said she wasn't feeling good. And once, what ends up happening that night is she wakes up and she has a miscarriage in the middle of the night. Um, and then after that, I don't know what happened, but I think it was what made her and Arthur Miller, her husband, kind of reconcile for the time being because they eventually did divorce. Um, because she, he went up to see her while she was recovering and she was like, we can't do this anymore. You know, I have Arthur and, you know, you're young and stuff like that. Um, you know, everyone thinks of Marilyn as this, again, like I said, a sex icon and, you know, beautiful. And she was, she was absolutely beautiful. She wasn't stick thin. You know, her arms were, you know, they had fat on them. Like, mind you. Her thighs touched. Her stomach wasn't toned. She had fat rolls. You know, her boobs weren't, you know, perfect. Like they are, like, you know, actresses today, you know, they want everything to be perfect. And she's still one of the most beautiful people known to man in the world that has ever lived. And I think that's a good thing because every girl, every little girl always goes through that phase. I don't care how rich you are. I don't care how good you actually look, you always go through that phase, usually in your early teens, where you just think you are ugly, you're too fat, your hair's wrong, you know, just anything, really. And, you know, Marilyn wasn't perfect. You know, she came from a small town, nobody knew who she was. She was bounced around from her parents' home, her mom's home, really, to a family friends, to her aunts, to her godmothers, you know, foster homes. And she was an only child up until later on and then she found out she had a half sister or something from her mom's side and she was married off when she was like 17 to this guy that she didn't even know really um i just i'm sorry if there's like a lot of dead time where i'm trying to think because i'm just i just wish people wouldn't understand that she was more than marilyn monroe she was more than the actress you know she was a person and i think a lot of people forget that and, you know, Elton John has a song called Candle in the Wind, which is absolutely beautiful. And I, if I really sit and I'm, like, listening to it, I will start crying. And he actually did a redo of it where he changed the words for Princess Di's funeral. But in it, he says, um, goodbye, Norma Jean, though I never knew you at all, you had the grace to hold yourself while those around you crawled. And that's true. You know, throughout all these hardships, she still held her head up. And she said, good, and it said, goodbye, Norma Jean, from the young man in the 22nd row who sees you as something more than sexual, more than just our Marilyn Monroe. And, you know, then the, the chorus is, uh, seems to me you lived your life like a candle in the wind. Your candle burned out long before your legend ever did. And that's true. You know, she's not going to be forgotten. You know, she is going to live on. And, I just wish people could see her for more than that. And I don't think a lot of people do, sadly enough. You know, she was, you know, she wasn't the, you know, she was a very good actress. She wasn't the best actress, but she was a very good actress. The best movies that I like her in are uh, Prince and a Showgirl and How to Marry a Million, or no, uh, Gentlemen Prefer Blondes, where she plays Lorelai. That's a great movie. It's very funny. Her and Jane Russell are like the Lucy and Ethel Another Lucy and Ethel, they're perfect for each other. Um, I just... And, you know, the whole... And then, like, even Elton John, he said in the song, um, Even when you died, the press still hounded you. All the papers had to say was that Marilyn was found in the nude. Which is true. When she died, no one cared how she died. All they cared about was she was naked, which is sad. That's sad. You know, I don't know. I don't think she killed herself. I think it was accidental. I don't know about all these conspiracy theories with the Kennedy brothers and, you know, mafia and CIA and stuff like that. I don't, I don't know about that. All I know is that she was a sick girl and she was dealing with it in the best way she could. Um, and eventually it led to her death, her very sad, untimely death. Um, you know, all she wanted was a family and she could never have that. And I'm going to wrap this up now because I've been rambling. So, um, if you guys want, I'll put the, just the link to Candle in the Wind in the description. Other than that, have a fantastic day, you guys.